The luxury compact SUV segment of the automotive industry is very competitive and it's primarily dominated by this BMW X3 and this Mercedes-Benz GLC. But how do these two semi-sporty trim levels of their respective models compare against each other? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. Starting things off in the BMW X3 M40i, you would be forgiven for thinking that it's an X3M with all the M badges that are inside the cabin and outside of the car, but it's one tier below the X3M. Speaking of which, it has the same engine as the BMW X3M, but it's not as powerful of course. It still produces a very healthy 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. This is from a 3 liter inline 6. BMW claims a 0 to 100 km an hour time of 4.5 seconds, which is really quick for something that weighs 2 tons. And from behind the steering wheel, it really feels that fast because you get pushed hard into the back of the seat every time you put your foot down. The peak torque figure is a bit less than in the Mercedes-Benz GLC 43 AMG, but in this BMW it is reached at lower RPMs. I think about 1700 RPMs versus 2500 in the Mercedes GLC. So this engine feels a tiny bit more responsive, especially at lower RPMs. And that's partially due to the fact that it has a 48 volt mild hybrid system. The integrated electric motor provides a little bit of power up until the turbocharger gets into its correct boost threshold and then takes over and provides the bulk of the power. And speaking of the mild hybrid system, it also helps with fuel economy. This 2022 X3 M40i is rated for 11.2 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. During my time behind the wheel of it, I averaged 11 liters per 100 kilometers. It was difficult to get it lower because the engine sounded pretty good in Sport Plus mode. <laughs> And I was able to achieve that fuel economy number because this mild hybrid system is pretty much the same as the one that you find in other Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Unfortunately, the GLC doesn't have it, but I'm pretty sure that the next generation of the GLC will have it. But anyway, back to this X3, the 48 volt mild hybrid system will shut off the engine momentarily before you arrive at a complete stop, saving you a little bit more extra fuel. Also, if you're in the Eco Pro mode, it will shut off the engine every time you lift off the throttle pedal and coast. Of course, it will immediately turn the engine back on as soon as you touch the throttle pedal or apply enough braking force. It does this so that you can coast a little bit further because with the engine off, there's no engine braking. The engine in this GLC 43 is actually a 3 liter twin turbo V6 and it produces 385 horsepower and 384 pound feet of torque. This being a turbocharged engine, it does have quite a high turbo threshold. That is, when you put your foot down at low RPMs, it takes a while for the turbos to spool up. However, if you're in the higher RPMs, 2500 right now, put your foot down it picks up much more quickly. But while this does not have the new inline six engine with the EQ boost that's found in the E53 AMG, the bi-turbo V6 in this GLC can still accelerate the car to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9 seconds, according to Mercedes-Benz. But Mercedes tends to be a bit on the conservative side with their times. And I think that under the most ideal conditions, 
This GLC 43 will make that 0 to 100 km an hour sprint in around 4.6 or 4.7 seconds. However, fuel economy is mm, not the greatest. It can be good if you're very gentle on throttle, but because I like the sound of that exhaust, I've been averaging closer to around 14 and a half liters per hundred kilometers, and I fear that might actually go up in the next few days. Officially, the 2022 GLC 43 AMG is rated for 12.9 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. The X3 M40i has significantly better city fuel economy, but the highway fuel economy figures are nearly identical between these two. Made it to the engine is a 9-speed automatic and for the most part it's pretty good at doing what it's intended to do, shift gears. In normal comfort mode, the gears are quick to change and for the most part you don't really feel them. You may feel them at uh, through first and second, second and third at the lower gears, but at higher gears you really can't tell that it's shifting apart from hearing the engine noise change, obviously. Put the transmission in Sport Plus and you will definitely feel those gear shifts a lot more. And also, using the paddles, they're pretty responsive. The transmission in the BMW X3 M40i is an 8-speed ZF automatic. In normal comfort mode, the shifts are absolutely seamless, pretty much the same as in the Mercedes GLC. But in Sport Plus mode, you do feel them a little bit more. However, they are quick, nearly as quick as a dual-clutch automatic. This transmission is one of the best, or probably the best automatic transmissions out there. As for driving around corners in the X3 M40i, it's actually a lot of fun, even though it's an SUV. The steering is nice and sharp, and it's actually pretty communicative in Sport Plus mode. Also, the adaptive dampers limit a lot of the body roll, so it feels nice and stable and flat, even if you really push it hard through the corners. It's akin more to a sports sedan rather than a large SUV, or not really large SUV, compact SUV but it's still bigger than a sports sedan. The GLC 43 AMG rides on air suspension. It does allow for a bit more body roll than I was expecting from an AMG branded vehicle, but it doesn't feel like as though it's driving on its door handles. Around corners, the GLC 43 feels neutral without much in the way of understeer or oversteer. The 4MATIC all-wheel drive system does a good job of sending power where it needs to be for maximum grip when going through or exiting a corner. It's not a 4MATIC Plus system with a hidden drift mode, but this SUV will still get your heart pumping if the mood takes you. The ride comfort in this BMW X3 M40i is not quite as nice as the ride in the Mercedes GLC 43 AMG. In the GLC, it comes standard with air suspension. This X3 doesn't have it. So the ride in the GLC is much more forgiving over rough roads and bumps, whereas the ride in this X3 is a little bit more jittery, especially over poorly maintained roads or even when you're driving on concrete highways. For long road trips, I'd much rather be in the Mercedes than this X3. Inside these two compact luxury SUVs, you will find a similar amount of space. On paper, the Mercedes GLC offers more headroom and legroom in both the front and rear seats than in the BMW, but the difference is only about 20 millimeters or just over half an inch. That little bit does make a difference though, as my knees don't feel as squished behind my driving position in the Mercedes compared to the BMW. But the GLC does not have reclining backrests like in the X3. Behind the seats, these two cars are identical. I'm not even exaggerating. 
They both have the exact same cargo capacity at 550 liters with the rear seats up and 1,600 liters with the rear seats folded. And of course, both of them have power operated lift gates. The similarities continue as these two cars have starting prices that are only $100 in difference. The 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLC 43 AMG starts at $67,900 Canadian, while the 2022 BMW X3 M40i starts at $68,000 Canadian. But being German brands, both of them are equipped with extra packages and options. This GLC 43 was optioned to $82,990 Canadian while the X3 M40i was $82,040 Canadian. For this 2022 model year, the BMW X3 received a larger 12.3 inch infotainment touchscreen. It's still running the same BMW system, which is very robust and pretty easy to navigate around. There are also physical controls for the more commonly used features, such as the climate and the heated seats. No ventilated front seats in this demo vehicle, but they are available for a price. Also, the center console controls and gear selector have been changed for the 2022 model year. They didn't change in how they operate, but rather how they look. For example, here is how they looked in the 2021 X4. Also, I couldn't help but notice how BMW likes to use a bit more bland looking plastics than Mercedes. The GLC has the nicer materials inside the cabin. Granted, this demo vehicle had the optional carbon fiber and aluminum trim for $1,500, but the leather on the seats, the Alcantara steering wheel, the stitching across the door panels and dashboard, it all just looks and feels nicer than in the BMW X3. As for the design of the interior, it remains unchanged for the 2022 model from the previous year. In fact, the last major interior change was for the 2020 model year, where it received the new MBUX infotainment system and new touchpad controller on the center console. If you've never used a Mercedes-Benz infotainment system before, it can be a bit daunting at first, but you get used to it after fooling around with all the menus and sub-menus. Also, the GLC has a much more customizable driver display than the one in the X3. On the outside, again, the GLC had its last major update back in 2020. It still looks stylish, especially on these 21 inch wheels, but for 2023, Mercedes Benz will unveil a new generation of the GLC. As for the BMW X3, 2022 marks the car's mid cycle update, or as BMW likes to call it, life cycle impulse. It gets new front and rear bumper designs with more sharp edges in the front, and around back, it has halo energy swords for taillights. Best of all though, those exhaust tips are real. Those are not fakes. So between these two luxury compact SUVs, which one is best? Well, the BMW is definitely the more sporty to drive of the two. I also really like the engine in this X3, especially with the addition of the mild hybrid system but the ride in the Mercedes is better and I still prefer the interior of the GLC more than the interior of this X3. So for me, if I were in the market for a vehicle like this, I'd probably be walking towards a Mercedes-Benz dealership. I just like that balance between performance and comfort and the Mercedes does it better than this X3. This is focused a little bit too much on the performance side and don't get me wrong, I like performance vehicles just fine, but in an SUV, I want that balance of comfort and performance. But that's just my opinion. What's yours? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to know more about either of these two SUVs, I wrote more detailed reviews of them over on my website. You can find the links in the video description or click on the pop-up banner up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll probably be another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And see you in the next video.